Arbeit macht frei. Work sets you free. A slogan the Nazis branded at the entrance of several concentration camps. Not the type of place you think of going to as a tourist. But these British travelers aren't on your average holiday. They're only visiting sites in Germany connected to the Third Reich. Why would anyone choose such a tour? And is this dark chapter in history what Germans want visitors to come for? Over the next few days, I'll be joining the group to find out. It's sightseeing day one, and they've arrived at Dachau concentration camp near Munich. People from all over Europe were imprisoned, tortured, and killed here. Tens of thousands of them died because of disease, malnutrition, and suicide. You lose some of the sensations. Now you can see everything, it's a lovely blue sky, and you can walk through row after row of barrack foundations, but you don't smell anything and you don't hear anything. But nevertheless, once you get to the crematoria, then it uh, still gets you. When American soldiers liberated the concentration camp at the end of World War II, residents of Dachau were forced to confront the scale and brutality of Nazi persecution. By that time, there were piles of corpses in the crematoria. The ovens could no longer keep up with the camp's countless death toll. Now, around a million people come here each year. I went to find out how the foundation felt about Third Reich tours making a stop here. I just spoke to a member of staff from the educational department here at Dachau concentration camp. Filming of the interview wasn't permitted, but she did say that regardless of the reasons why, all visitors who come here are welcome. She also stressed the importance of this being a memorial site rather than a tourism site. And all visitors are encouraged to spend two to three hours at the concentration camp to really be able to reflect on the atrocities that have happened here. But it's hard to grasp how anybody who visits can be indifferent to the horrors of the Holocaust. The next stop is associated with the Nazis, but isn't as emotionally challenging to visit. Berchtesgaden, an alpine town near the border with Austria. Only a tenth of the visitors in this region are from abroad. The rest are Germans, many of whom come for activity holidays in the mountains. But the tour group aren't here to go hiking. They're here because the region used to be a seat of power during the Third Reich. The Eagle's Nest is one of the most popular tourist sites in the area. It was Hitler's mountain retreat, and we we're making our way up there. You need to be down here at five past well. Uncanny. That's how it felt following in Hitler's footsteps and taking the same golden lift that he used. It was hard to believe that this was Hitler's view too, but he only saw it a few times. He rarely visited Eagle's Nest. Eva Brown was Hitler's partner. She spent far more time here entertaining her friends and family. The Eagle's Nest was a gift the Nazi party gave Hitler for his 50th birthday. Now it's a seasonal restaurant and beer garden overlooking Lake Königsee, the Alps and the surrounding countryside. But the views aren't the only reason why some people have chosen this tour. I'm interested in history basically. It's one of my sort of amateur interests, if you like, all history. But um, in particular, I like the um, history of the wars, all wars, and this particularly appealed to me because you read so much about these sites and, um, you know, the terrible things that were done and how everything happened. Tour guide David McCormick has seen interest in this trip growing over the past few years. Most of our passengers come here because they've already read about this period in history and they've read about some of the sites and they want to see the sites because it's seeing the places that they've read about, it makes the history come alive for them. I would say it's very healthy indeed to study the past because if you study the past you can understand it and we can all then ensure that the history doesn't repeat itself. For the mayor of Berchtesgaden, Tourism of Nazi sites is a sensitive issue. He's concerned about the motivation of visitors who come. We still move on by, by checking groups uh, which want to visit the sites 
in, in this historical conclusion, we don't want uh, to have any neo-Nazis here in Berchtesgaden. The tourism board in Berchtesgaden has similar concerns. We care about this part of our history, but we don't want to promote it. We don't want to, people to come up there because it's a, it's a special place and they want to feel maybe the, the nationalistic time. People come here not to praise National Socialism, they come here to understand that terrible period in German history between 1933 and 1945. If not the region's Nazi past, what then should travelers come to Berchtesgaden for? To explore the mountains, the nature, also the culture here in Berchtesgaden is very genuine. I think this is what people should come and see and they should get the information about the Third Reich as well. But the region's Third Reich history is the main draw for British visitors, like these Britons I ran into on their way to Austria. I find it very strange in the fact that this area of Germany is like heaven. Up there, they, you know, they created evil. What is it about Germany that keeps luring these frequent travelers back? It's very, very clean. Everything seems very, very fresh. The people are very, very friendly. Everybody's very helpful. Everything seems to work. Um, I like there's a lot of history here, good and bad history, I should add. People are also drawn to sites in Germany built by the Nazis that have nothing to do with evil. And I drove over a thousand kilometers north to get to one of them. Next stop, Rügen an island by the Baltic coast in a province that isn't as well known as Bavaria. Yes, Germany has a coast, it has sun and sand too. But similar to Berchtesgaden, 90% of Rügen's visitors are German. It'd be tricky to find any British tourists here. That's because of all the provinces in Germany, mecklenburg pomerania is the least visited by British people. Rügen isn't on the tour group's itinerary. I'd catch up with them later. I've come because of a major Nazi landmark, Prora. Here on this place there was only land and dune landscape until 1936. And in 1936, we put the first stone here for the first German organization, Kraft durch Freude. It should be a tourism place. Here should be 20,000 so-called Volksgenossen at the same time take a vacation. Prora was just one project led by the Strength Through Joy organization. But it never lived up to Hitler's ambitions. It was four and a half kilometers long before World War II stopped its completion. A museum on one end of the complex documents Prora's history. It attracts tens of thousands of visitors a year. But tour guide Christian Schmidt hasn't seen any effort made to promote it. Wouldn't Prora be an interesting stop for the Third Reich tour? Even if we would yeah, try to um, yeah, attract visitors from Britain, we would always try to go via the nature and not via the Nazi history. I'm not aware of the fact that people are only coming for Pora. Of course, it's one of the sightseeing stops for groups also, but it um, would be very sad if people are only coming to Rügen, going to Pora and leaving the island again. That would be bad. <laughs> but the only British people I could find in Rügen were doing just that. It wouldn't be my choice of beach holiday if I wanted a beach holiday, but it's interesting to see for an afternoon and drive around and see what it's like, but it's interesting to see for a short period of time. I wouldn't want to stay here. We came to see Prora because it's part of history to look at the grimness of the pre-war and post-war use, and it is quite interesting. Now, more than half of the structure is no longer in ruins. Large parts of it are being rebuilt into flats and holiday apartments. The commercialization of Prora is something not everyone approves of. Es ist von staatlicher Seite bis jetzt kein Geld zur Verfügung gestellt worden, um hier vor Ort auch eine geschichtliche Aufklärung zu machen. Als Massenurlaubsort, wie das hier mal dienen sollte, das ein bisschen aufzuklären. Aber es ist offensichtlich Geld da, um auch solche Sachen zu fördern. Das ganze Gebäude steht unter Denkmalschutz. For now, Pora remains excluded from Germany's landscape of Third Reich monuments. 
But in the nation's capital, a three-hour drive south of Rügen, there are plenty of tourist sites that make Germany's Nazi past very public. Berlin, home to a multicultural array of three and a half million people, and also the country's seat of parliament. In this vibrant metropolis, symbols of the country's turbulent 20th century history are visible everywhere you go. For British travelers in Germany, Berlin is the number one destination. What brings them to the city? Me and my fiance came over for a weekend away and we just like doing weekend breaks, city breaks across Europe. Uh, I try and travel every weekend, so this weekend I came to Berlin. We were just looking for somewhere interesting to go for a sightseeing holiday that was not too expensive to get to. It's history and it's nightlife. Nobody could miss the Holocaust Memorial in the heart of Berlin. Even if you're here for reasons other than history, it's easy to come across sites connected to the Third Reich. There are plenty of actual Germans and Berliners who don't even know about these sites. For instance, when we were by the Hitler bunker, there were people cycling past and laughing, and they probably don't even know themselves what's going on. So it's, it's, it's very important to get this education, I think. Further out from the city centre, there are more sites that memorialize the Holocaust. It's a group's last day in Germany, and I've joined them at the Wannsee Conference House, a former villa in a Berlin suburb. Nazi leaders met here to plan the murder of six million Jews. There comes a time, as um, a couple of others of us on the tour said, you can be all terrored out. And so we shifted up a decade and went to see Checkpoint Charlie instead. It was good just to, to break away from this because it has been eight days of the of, uh, Second World War. A lot of people just know it as um, the Hitler period and haven't looked much into it. I've done a little bit of research, read a few books about it, so I knew what was coming. But for a lot of people, it was a shock. No doubt about it. From where the most evil deed in history was done, the group still had one more sight to face. At a working railway station in the outskirts of the city, one platform is preserved for remembrance. It's called Platform 17, and this memorial contains a huge amount of information. Each metal panel details the number of Berlin Jews who were deported from this particular railway station. It will also tell you the destination and the date. So in a sense, the memorial is a history of the Holocaust. From here, trains full of Jews were sent to ghettos and extermination camps in the east. Over 50,000 of them perished after they left Berlin. We were on our own. That was very, very good in a way because you could just sit there and, and there was no one around. You could just sit there and see that railway siding and just think. <laughs>